What's the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval when you're getting a mortgage? Well, stay tuned because we're going to talk about that today. Hi, I'm Mary Jo Camarota, and I'm a New Jersey licensed real estate broker. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, be sure to like and subscribe so you can get notifications when I upload new weekly video. So you're wondering what's the difference between a mortgage pre-qualification and a pre-approval. All of these terms could be so confusing and overwhelming when you begin the home buying process. So that's what we're talking about today. Let's start off with the mortgage pre-qualification. What is it and what does it mean? Well, typically it's verbal and non-committal. That's what it is. You're giving a loan officer your information. You're telling them you make X amount of dollars a year. This is what you think your credit score could be. And this is roughly what your monthly debt is, your car payments, your credit cards, whatever you're spending money on. And he takes that information and tells you what he thinks that you can afford in a monthly mortgage payment. And there you have your budget. The pre-approval pre is a little bit more detailed takes a couple of days to get the answer back. And it also shows that you're committed to buying a home. You're ready. You, you want the keys to that new house. And your loan officer or lender is going to require some documentation from you in order to give you that pre-approval. And typically they ask for 30 days of pay stubs, your W-2s for the last two years, your uh, income tax return for the last two years, any checking or savings account statements for the last 30 days, as well as if you are a self-employed business owner, they may want to see, or they are going to want to see two years of tax returns as well as your personal tax returns. And also any investment accounts that you may have, they're going to want to see those statements. All of this information together with your credit report is going to be reviewed and they're going to give you an answer or pre-approval based on the information that you provided them with and tell you what you can afford to buy in a home. So what your monthly mortgage payment could look like if you purchased a home at this amount. That's their job to help you along that process. It's my job as the realtor to find you that house so you could pay for it every month. Once you get your pre-approval, let the fun begin. Then you talk to your realtor, someone like myself, and you hit the ground running and start looking for your home. This pre-approval letter makes my job and any other realtor's job a lot easier because we're then able to zero in on a specific price point and make sure that we're out showing you homes that you can afford to buy and you're comfortable with what your mortgage payment is going to be every month. A pre-approval does not mean that you get the house. That's something really important to remember. And you're asking why after you've been through all this, your realtor writes the contract, it's negotiated, it's accepted, it's out of attorney review, you did your home inspections, what could go wrong? Well, sometimes the house won't appraise. You may have to renegotiate the contract price if possible. If there is liens against the property and they can't get them cleared up for the title policy, that could be a problem. These are just things that happen, but you should be aware of these things that could potentially happen. You wanna make sure though, during this entire process, that you keep paying your bills on time, don't miss them. Do not open up any new credit cards and certainly don't go shopping for new furniture for that new house quite yet because those store salesmen in the furniture stores are notorious for telling you about the phenomenal deal and interest rate, 0% interest for one year if you open up a credit card to buy the furniture for your house. You don't want to do that. They will pull your commitment and not fund your mortgage if it puts you over the top of your loan to debt ratio. And one other thing, if you're thinking about that new car, wait until you close on your house and then go buy it. Don't do anything, don't buy anything until you're at the closing table, signing on the dotted line and handed the keys to your new home. Well, there you have it. The difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. If you like this video, be sure to leave a comment below and be sure to like and subscribe so you get notified as I build my YouTube channel and upload my weekly content. Thanks so much for watching.